What is happening in Gaza is televised. It is on all your TV screens to see, with the victims reporting on their destruction in real time. When the history books are written, when all is said and done, no one will be able to say they didn't know. No one will be able to say they didn't know. And something else which is there for all to see is which countries have taken a principled stance, a moral stance, a legal stance, and which have not. Which countries have engaged in good faith with our requests for open discussion on arms transfers and which have not. Which have stepped up to save lives and which sent weapons to destroy lives? Which countries tried to salvage international law and which sent the message that the law applies only when politically or economically convenient? And what the whole world is witnessing is that leadership is coming primarily from the global south not from those who have refused to condemn Israel, who continue to describe Israel's actions as self-defense, who continue to provide diplomatic, political, or military support, those who are more offended by people calling out and trying to stop genocide than by genocide itself, who failed once again during this never again moment in history. Apparently no crime, no matter how grave, from ethnic cleansing to apartheid to settler colonialism to genocide is enough for Israel's allies to say stop. When Israel made allegations against UNRWA, the UN humanitarian aid agency providing life-saving aid to the starving population of Gaza, and before investigations into these allegations were even concluded, those states decided to suspend their aid to the whole organization. On the other hand, in decades of findings by UN experts, commissions of inquiry, fact-finding missions, international, Palestinian, and Israeli human rights organizations, that Israel is responsible for war crimes, crimes against humanity, apartheid, and now an unfolding genocide, those states have not engaged in a single re-evaluation of military aid and preferential trade agreements they give to Israel. The double standards are astounding. In the midst of these well-documented crimes by Israel, continued, continuing to send weapons cannot be the result of a lack of knowledge. No, it is a deliberate choice, one made with full knowledge, a deliberate and conscious choice to send arms that will be used against Palestinians and contribute to the suffering of the Palestinian people, even as Israel's massacres continue in full view of the world. According to Amnesty International, states providing to Israel are, quote, violating their responsibility to prevent genocide and contributing to war crimes and crimes against humanity, unquote. So we need to ask ourselves why. Why are states that, are otherwise, that otherwise claim to champion international law, to champion the arms trade treaty, willing to put themselves in a situation of criminal liability, of immorality, in a situation where double standards risk irreversibly eroding the credibility of international law and the international system built since the Second World War, in a situation where their reputation in the eyes of millions of people around the world has been severely damaged and is unlikely to ever recover. Indeed, demonstrations around the world make it very clear, while a small number of powerful states stand with Israel as it pummels Gaza, the overwhelming majority of states and world public opinion stand firmly with Palestine, with the law, with peace. So we ask again to those states who insist on sending arms, for what purpose, to what end? Is the answer apathy, indifference, a head in the sand, continuation of business as usual? Is it profits, the desire to sell your weapons and make defense profits no matter the cost, legal, moral, or reputational? Is it political considerations or is it ideology emanating from a racist logic whereby different values are placed on different lives. People of the global south or of a certain color or nationality are seen as more disposable, less deserving of life, less worthy of empathy, outrage, and respect for the law. There is no diplomatic way of calling out racism and it is time to call a spade a spade. To those states, who have been and are still sending weapons despite the unfolding genocide taking place in Gaza, despite your knowledge of the facts and of the law, this is your moment of truth.
ask yourself, will you continue your arms trade with Israel or will you finally recognize the damage that your complicity is doing, not only to countless innocent Palestinian civilians, but also to yourselves, to the credibility of the law, to international peace and security, and finally change course and act responsibly. We are here to say that it is not too late to save Palestine, nor is it too late to save yourselves from continued complicity. To conclude, it is not only a moral duty, but a, also a legal duty incumbent upon all states to impose a two-way arms embargo on transfers of military items to and from Israel. We are not asking you to be pro-Palestinian, simply to be pro-international law, the laws that you yourselves have elaborated, embraced, or committed to. To be pro-peace, pro-humanity, we do not want special treatment. We simply want you to stop giving Israel special treatment as though it were a state above the law. If instead you choose to continue sending weapons to Israel as it annihilates the Palestinian population of Gaza, then you do not get to ever pretend again that you support international law, care about human life, or have moral convictions that apply universally. I thank you.